Death and life are in the power of your tongue. This knowledge filled me with such cheerfulness whenever pondering the law of Almighty God, who has given to us believers, his children, the ability and power over our lives by the way of our words. As it is written, Say unto them, As truly as I live, saith the Lord, as ye have spoken in my ears, so will I do to you. Numbers 14.28 KJV Death and life are in the power of the tongue, and they that love it shall eat the fruit thereof. Proverbs 18.21 KJV Death and life are in the power of the tongue, and those who love it and indulge it will eat its fruit and bear the consequences of their words. AMP This was an overwhelmingly joyous revelation. All throughout the years, I had believed that bad occurrences and circumstances were to be endured as some sort of test of my faith, forbearance. Realizing that I could, by the authority of Almighty God, decide directions in my life with whatever words I chose to speak made me feel both empowered and fraught with revelation as I glimpsed backward throughout the years. There was no tallying the times I had spoken trite terrors of negativity, doom, dread, into the airs of life without ever being aware that my curse words were heard by armies of demons ready to fulfill their purpose, their plan. Such is kingdom law as God had decreed, for it is written, Wherefore, seeing we also are compassed about, with so great a cloud of witnesses, let us lay aside every weight and the sin which does so easily beset us, and let us run with patience the race that is set before us. Hebrews 12, 1 KJV A good man out of the good treasure of his heart brings forth good things, and an evil man out of the evil treasure brings forth evil things. But I say unto you, that every idle word that men shall speak, they shall give account thereof in the day of judgment. For by thy words thou shalt be justified, and by thy words thou shalt be condemned. Matthew twelve thirty-five through 37 KJV The good man from his inner good treasure brings out good things, and the evil man from his inner evil treasure brings out evil things. But I tell you, on the day of judgment, people will have to give an accounting for every careless or useless word they speak. For by your words, reflecting your spiritual condition, you will be justified and acquitted of the guilt of sin. And by your words, rejecting me, you will be condemned and sentenced. AMP. There is only one thing to do, I thought determining to speak good words in my favor. And those were God's own sayings, for surely no diction drew greater in all blessings than those of our Holy Father's letters of love for us, for me. It made perfect sense to me to laminate the scriptures I had been saying, memorizing and seeing before my eyes all the hours of every day. For as God commanded us that we should keep our ears, eyes, and minds meditating on his words, thus bringing life and health to all of our flesh. It is written, I call heaven and earth to record this day against you, that I have set before you life and death, blessing and cursing. Therefore choose life, that both thou and thy seed may live. Deuteronomy 30, 19, KJV I call heaven and earth as witnesses against you today that I have set before you life and death, blessing and the curse. Therefore you shall choose life in order that you may live, you and your descendants. AMP My son, attend to my words. Incline thine ear unto my sayings. Let them not depart from thine eyes. Keep them in the midst of thine heart, for they are life unto those who find them and health to all their flesh. 
Keep thy heart with all diligence, for out of it are the issues of life. Put away from thee a forward mouth, and perverse lips put far from thee. Proverbs 4.20 KJV My son, pay attention to my words and be willing to learn. Open your ears to my sayings. Do not let them escape from your sight. Keep them in the center of your heart, for they are life to those who find them, and healing and health to all their flesh. Watch over your heart with all diligence, for from it flows the springs of life. Put away from you a deceitful, lying, misleading mouth, and put devious lips far from you. AMP All too often, many think that speaking what is on their mind, such as feelings, pertaining to situations often causing grief, sorrows, and bitterness, is the only manner of which they can be free from their troublesome thoughts, worries, and concerns. It rarely, if ever, occurs to most that ranting and releasing such grievous words is what the devil is waiting for in his mission to attack God's children who speak wrongly, unwittingly, against the truth, as it is written. And the great dragon was cast out, that old serpent called the devil and Satan, which deceiveth the whole world. He was cast out into the earth, and his angels were cast out with him. And I heard a loud voice saying in heaven, Now is come salvation and strength and the kingdom of our God and the power of his Christ. For the accuser of our brethren is cast down, which accused them before our God day and night. And they overcame him by the blood of the Lamb and by the word of their testimony. And they loved not their lives unto death. Revelation 12, 9 through 11, KJV. And the great dragon was thrown down, the age old serpent who was called the devil and Satan. He who continually deceives and seduces the entire inhabited world. He was thrown down to the earth, and his angels were thrown down with him. Then I heard a loud voice in heaven saying, Now the salvation and the power and the kingdom, dominion reign of our God, and the authority of his Christ have come. For the accuser of our believing brothers and sisters has been thrown down at last. He who accuses them and keeps bringing charges of sinful behavior against them before our God day and night, and they overcame and conquered him because of the blood of the Lamb and because of the word of their testimony. For they did not love their life and renounce their faith even when faced with death. A.M.P. We are made in the image of our Holy Father, the Almighty God, who created this world with words, and we should conduct ourselves according to His loving commandments. As it is written, Be ye therefore followers of God as dear children, and walk in love as Christ has also loved us, and has given Himself for us an offering and a sacrifice to God, for a sweet-smelling savor, but fornication and all uncleanness or covetedness, let it not be named once among you as becometh saints, neither filthiness nor foolish talking nor jesting, which are not convenient but rather giving thanks. Ephesians 5, 1 through 4, KJV. Therefore become imitators of God, copy him and follow his example, as well-beloved children imitate their father, and walk continually in love, that is, value one another, practice empathy and compassion, unselfishly seeking the best for others, just as Christ also loved you and gave himself up for us, an offering and sacrifice to God, slain for you, so that it became a sweet fragrance. But sexual immortality and all moral impurity and decent offensive behavior or greed must not even be hinted among you, 
as it is proper among saints, for as believers our way of life, whether in public or in private, reflects the validity of our faith. Let there be no filthiness or silly talk or coarse, obscene, vulgar joking, because such things are not appropriate for believers. But instead, speak of your thankfulness to God. AMP. Satan's deception is to fool men into believing lies and using technologies and tests and symptoms and circumstances to convince them that there is nothing they can hope for or on nothing they can hope for as the overwhelming conditions dictate. Many wrongly accuse or believe that it is God's will that they writhe in such conditions, not realizing that they are under satanic siege. For it is written, Who his own self bore our sins in his own body on the tree, that we, being dead to sins, should live unto righteousness, by whose stripes ye were healed. 1 Peter 2.24 KJV he personally bore our sins in his own body on the tree, as on an altar, and offered himself on it, that we might die, cease to exist to sin, and live to righteousness. By his wounds you have been healed. AMP He is despised and rejected of men, a man of sorrows, and acquainted with grief. And we hid, as it were, our faces from him. He was despised, and we esteemed him not. Surely he hath borne our griefs, and carried our sorrows. Yet we did esteem him stricken, smitten of God, and afflicted. But he was wounded for our transgressions. He was bruised for our iniquities. The chastisement of our peace was upon him, and with his stripes we are healed. Isaiah 53, 3-5, KJV Remembering that we believers in our Lord Jesus Christ, having been also crucified with him, and it is now he who abides in us, having been born again from the word of God, for we are saved by the grace of God through faith, it is written, For I, through the law, am dead to the law, that I might live unto God. I am crucified with Christ, nevertheless I live. Yet not I, but Christ liveth in me. And the life which I live now in the flesh, I live by the faith of the Son of God, who loved me and gave himself for me. I do not frustrate the grace of God, for if righteousness come by the law, then Christ is dead in vain. Galatians 2, 19 through 21 KJV. For through the law I died to the law, and its demands on me, because salvation is provided through the death and resurrection of Christ, so that I might from now on live to God. I have been crucified with Christ. That is, in him I have shared his crucifixion. It is no longer I that live, but Christ that lives in me. The life I live now in the body, I live by faith, by adhering to, relying on, and completely trusting in the Son of God, who loved me and gave himself up for me. I do not ignore or nullify the gracious gift of the grace of God, his amazing unmerited favor. For if righteousness comes through observing the law, then Christ died needlessly. His suffering and death would have had no purpose whatsoever. AMP For by grace are you saved through faith, and not of yourselves. It is the gift of God, not of works, lest any man should boast. For we are his workmanship, created in Christ Jesus unto good works, which God hath before ordained that we should walk in them. Ephesians 2, 8 through 10 KJV For it is by grace God's remarkable compassion and favor drawing you to Christ that you have been saved, actually delivered from judgment, and given eternal life through faith. And this salvation is not of yourselves, not through your own effort, 
but it is the undeserved gracious gift of God, not as the result of your works, nor your attempts to keep the law so that no one will be able to boast or take credit for it in any way for his salvation. For we are his workmanship, his own master work, a work of art created in Christ Jesus, reborn from above, spiritually transformed, renewed, and ready to be used for good works, which God prepared for us beforehand, taking paths which he set so that we would walk in them, living the good life which he prearranged and made ready for us. AMP Surely there is much to speak of which is good, forgetting all that is past, for as we believers have died to sins and are born again from above, as it is appointed for every man to die once, that we have done when we accepted Jesus Christ as our Lord and Savior having been crucified with him, and now living as new creatures by the word of Almighty God. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Cast all worries, fears, and bitterness of memories, traumas, and circumstances, past, present, everything out, bringing all and every notion to the authority of Jesus Christ and obedience of the truth wielding your sword, which is the word of God, in the presence of enemies, Satan and evil spirits, which bring sickness and sordidness, for it is written, Wherefore, take unto you the whole armor of God, that ye may be able to withstand in the evil day, and having done all to stand, stand therefore, having your loins girded about with the truth, and having the breastplate of righteousness, and your feet shod with the preparation of the gospel of peace. Above all, taking the shield of faith, wherein ye shall be able to quench all the fiery darts of the wicked, and take the helmet of salvation, and the sword of the Spirit, which is the word of God. Ephesians six thirteen through 17 KJV Therefore put on the complete armor of God so that you will be able to successfully resist and stand your ground in the evil day of danger and having done everything that the crisis demands to stand firm in your place, fully prepared, immovable, and victorious. So stand firm and hold your ground having tightened the wide band of truth, personal integrity, moral courage around your waist, and having put on the breastplate of righteousness, an upright heart, and having strapped on your feet the gospel of peace in preparation to face the enemy with firm-footed stability and the readiness produced by the good news. Above all, Lift up the protective shield of faith with which you can extinguish all the flaming arrows of the evil one and take the helmet of salvation and the sword of the spirit, which is the word of God. These things I have spoken unto you that in me you might have peace. In the world you shall have tribulation, but be of good cheer. I have overcome the world. John sixteen thirty three. KJV. I have told you these things so that in me you will have perfect peace. In the world you will have tribulation, distress, and sufferings. But be courageous, be confident, undaunted, and filled with joy. I have overcome the world. My conquest is accomplished, my victory abiding. AMP. I create the fruit of the lips. Peace, peace to him that is far off, and to him that is near, saith the Lord, and I will heal him. Isaiah fifty seven nineteen, KJV As I create the praise of his lips, peace, peace to him who is far away, both Jew and Gentile, and to him who is near, says the Lord, and I will heal him making his lips blossom anew with thankful praise. A.M.P.